Welcome to my diary, beloved. I'm Tatami, and today we are going to be talking about the California gubernatorial recall of 2021. And so this video is for my comrades, my eco-socialists, my leftists, my green voters, my Californians, whoever you are. Let's talk politics. So basically, long story short, I've decided to go with voting no and voting for Dan Kapelovitz. This is the official stance of the Green Party of California, and I've decided to go with it as well. When I looked into who were the leading candidates, what this circus is really looking like, and y'all, it is a mess. Like, it's a mess. We have like 46 candidates. A bunch of them didn't even write anything in the booklet that's sent to our home. It was just blank. Like, if somebody came to my house right now and was like, quick to Tommy, tell us all the issues that you would back and like why you would back them if you were California governor. I could write that in like 10, 15 minutes. How these people didn't find 10, 15 minutes of their time for a booklet being sent to all of our house, I will never know. And an official fuck you to, I believe it was a libertarian who wrote, check my YouTube. Those are the only three words on his. What the goddamn hell? Y'all need to do better. Do better. I should have thrown my hat in the ring with this nonsense because it's just too much. I don't want to vote no on uh for Gavin. I think Gavin's trash. I think Gavin's classist. I think that he's an elitist who just thinks the rules don't apply to him the same way they apply to other people. I think he's beholden to his, you know, corporate donors and he's a typical centrist dem, the type that I would just rather not see in office anymore. However, um he did, you know, him and the Democrat Party, like, they just struggle with political strategy to a point where it's like, they they set themselves up to fail, and then they try to blame everybody else for the reason they failed, you know, like, with the Hillary Clinton, they knew damn well nobody liked Hillary Clinton like that, but they still insisted on pushing her, and somehow it was everybody else's fault that she lost. With Biden, they knew everybody felt he was a shit sandwich, but they still insisted everybody else take a bite and risk it for the biscuit. And it was a lot closer than they like to admit. I know now they're like, it's a landslide. That wasn't a landslide. They'll skid in on the seat of your pants the same way Trump skid in on the seat of his pants in 2016. And it's sad to watch. However, um, they decided to go the same route with Gavin for this. They don't have any like real big heavy hitters coming in from the Democrat party. So it makes it very hard for everybody else because they basically set it up so a Republican just could just walk away with this super easily. Um, and in my opinion, even the Democrat who's the top uh, contender is kind of He's more right than he is left. I will say that. He is not a good person, but let's get into that. Because um I have here a um an article called One Progressive's Guide to the California Recall by Ernest A. Canning. He basically describes, you know, how you are supposed to um how you're supposed to vote, right? You're supposed to vote yes or no for the recall, but then you're also supposed to choose somebody just in case the recall is allowed. And he's advocating, Ernest is advocating for everybody, Democrat and Green, to vote for Dan Kapelovitz because the top two candidates are really, you know, frankly, they're nuts. It's frankly, they're nuts. So let's get into the article real quick. So um, first we're going to talk about Larry Elder. The two leading um, people, let's see, uh, we have one of them has 27%. I believe Kevin Pafrath has 29% and Elder has like had like 26% at the time that he was writing this. And they, um, yeah, Paf Democrat Pafrath had 27%. Republican Elder had 24%. He's like a radio host, I guess. And um, Pafrath is just like a wealthy rich boy. So, um, Elder is anti-choice. <laughs> That's first off the bat. He loved Trump. He's super far right. He has referred to climate change as a crock. And he believes that the minimum wage should be zero dollars. And, I, and the, Ernest wrote on this slavery, <laughs> like, it's like, what does that mean? Zero dollars. Someone should be allowed to pay zero dollars for labor. And, um, and so he said an unsuspecting progressive might come to believe that Pafrath's lead over Elder is a good thing. However, if you go to LinkedIn, 
Uh, Pathrath is a 29-year-old re real estate developer who boasts that he's a self-made millionaire with a net worth of over $20 million. As revealed by LA Magazine, Pathrath has a lack of empathy for those less fortunate than him, and it's reflected by his extraordinary callous approach to homelessness. Pathrath wants the National Guard to round up the unhoused and deposit them somewhere. What the hell is this circus? I should have ran, y'all. What is this? How is this a real thing? And this isn't even, like, crazy. Like, you know, we've seen how, like I said, this is just classist nonsense. We we just, every single person, for the most part, that I saw running had something classist to say about the homeless. And, like, I think a lot of people, I'm not sure what who they think the homeless are, but uh, most of the homeless out here, they're locals. They've lived here. This is our home. We're all struggling for housing here. We're all competing for the boonies out here. They, they, they're out here like asking i saw a house for sale that uh, or sorry for rent that was like in the the worst part of san jose and this person was literally asking for like three thousand dollars a month for this two-bedroom apartment in a shitty part of town and then no no yeah three thousand dollars and then they were like look at this huge backyard and the backyard was like a little spot of concrete slab I was like, this is ridiculous, but there's nobody regulating any of this. And of course, if anybody says anything, it's just like the homeless. It's their problem. We've got to bust them out of here just like they've been bust in here. It's just ridiculous. UCLA law professor Gary Blasey described Pathrat's proposal as the poorest substitute for a policy on homelessness that I've seen in 38 years, according to the magazine. Um, let's see. He, he then goes in on... Um, he then goes in on like science of, of COVID, what uh, Gavin Newsom's whole thing is with the mask mandates. But I guess both Elder and Pathrath are against this. Um, Elder vowed to repeal all COVID mask and vaccine mandates. And Pathrath, Pathrath intends to make all COVID safety measures optional. And I'm just so confused why mask mandates are like even that big of a deal. I'm very confused by that. I'm also confused, what, like, do you guys remember there was several companies that were trying to make, like, nasal spray things for COVID? I wonder what happened to that. What happened to testing? Why are they making this stuff into, like, optional and, like, maybe it will, maybe we won't? <laughs> Who knows? I just don't get where that's going. And then, um... So basically, we've got people who just want to ignore the pandemic and business as usual for the sake of capitalism. Um, and uh, the other person who I saw who was Green Party on the list when I was looking it up, she um, she was one of the people who didn't even write something about what she was into. So I was like, that's kind of annoying. <sighs> so I um, but I did like look into it and I just. Kapelovitz, Kapelovitz is what I keep wanting to call him, but I'm I'm pretty sure I've heard it as Kapelovitz like a dozen times. So at any rate, I looked onto Kapelovitz and I did really like what I saw. I did like that he, when it came to climate change, he linked straight to Howie Hawkins, Green New Deal, and he was an advocate for that. I liked that he went in on the California wildfire situation, talking about it, talking about how we could be up keeping that better. And then he also went into a whole spiel of about Native Americans and working with them since they have plans and they've been shouting till their horse that a lot of the California Native Americans, there's like a lot of them around here and they all have, a lot of them have stepped forward and been like, our people have ways of dealing with this to make it, like to mitigate the damage that occurs and to stop it before it happens and all these things. And that's what he's saying is that he does want to work with them. He is, um, he's for ranked choice voting. He's, uh, he also, I was surprised to see him blow, throw in some stuff about animal rights. I wasn't ready for all that. Um, but I'm actually, I'm fine for animal rights activism being chucked in here. I'm absolutely for that. So, you know, while it's not something at the like top of the top of my list, I was pleasantly surprised to see it. I was also, um, impressed with his, um, 
wanting to end the three strikes law and wanting to end mass incarceration. He went into that a little bit. I would have preferred to see a little more, but I did feel that when he, especially talking about stop trying children as adults, making the jails and prisons safer, safer. That's a huge one for me because, um, I just, I just think it's really wild that like taking them away from their lives, making it so they can't earn money, making it so they can't, you know, get work experience and can't be around their families that's punishment but for some reason we've decided like making our prisons into this psycho place where we can all be like ha ha well he's not gonna want to drop the soap now and that's funny on true crime when this asshole has killed a bunch of people but there's a lot of innocent people in jail a lot of innocent people in jail because we do do this mass incarceration bullshit because it, it, our prisoners are legally slaves in this country and we can overuse them for work and corporations rely on that walmart relies on that whole foods relies on that the list goes on and on you can find the list and it's shocking and sad it's like Whole Foods will put lists, fair trade this, and we ethically traded that. But then it's like you go to make a salad and the forks and shit and the boxes and shit are made by slaves and American slaves. And so, um, yeah, I just think like him deciding like that our prisons need to be safer so that these people don't get caught up. Like, I just don't think rape should be punishment. I really don't. So I really hate when people are like, yeah, like they're gonna get it. They're gonna be um, the misses in jail. I'm like, dude, right now, somebody's innocent brother, uncle, whatever, is somebody's bitch in jail. And it's not funny. It's fucking abuse. And they're being broken in jail because it's not safe for them. And then also, you know, the fact that things weren't safe for them with COVID, the fact that things weren't safe. And like, that's a bigger issue too, because I think a lot of our failings with COVID was really on the public health care, or not the public health care, on the healthcare system, on the private um, hospitals who were deciding not to be prepared for something like that. So then when it push came to shove, they were not prepared. They did not have enough space. They did not have enough ventilators. They did not have extra in case of an emergency. And then it, a lot of that is getting pushed on to like anti-vaxxers or anti-maskers. But I feel like at the end of the day, one of the biggest people we should be pointing to are these private places that simply because it was not making the money to be prepared for a, a disaster, they just weren't prepared. And I think that impacted the nurses, the doctors, all of these people in such a huge way. So long before there was a vaccine, they were being overworked and, uh, underappreciated and then like all of this flood came on to them because their bosses weren't prepared because our system wasn't prepared because we don't have like these requirements these regulations but that's another story for another day at any rate he does get into COVID-19 and um you know all of these issues with I, and like, honestly, I'm like, okay, uh, I, like I just said, if I was, if I was going after this stuff, I, I would, I would have been going for the foundation because I do feel like the foundation wasn't steady. And that's a lot of what went down. Like, yeah, our government abandoned us, all this stuff, but there is a point to be made with the private healthcare system that I just feel like people aren't doing. So he did go into, um, the, the forest, the California forest wildfires. Oh yeah, he talks about fair taxation. He talks about um, support for Medicare for all or single payer. As governor, he would sign that bill for all of us. He would end the criminalization of being homeless. Mm. Wait, your cheeks are big, they're full. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't hear you because there's food in your mouth. So he also is for Taka, what the hell, man? What are you even yelling for? Nobody's even looking at you. Okay, so he's for workers' rights. He's for the living wage. He's for free, lifelong public education. He is for the universal basic income. Um, and he's also for defunding the police, shifting resources from the police to other things. He um, also is for ending the death penalty. Oh, another one, I just don't think our government should be legally allowed to kill people. I'm never gonna applaud for that. And it's more expensive to do the death penalty than to just lock them up for life. All right, so he's also a lawyer, like the animal thing, the animal rights thing, like he's an animal rights lawyer, which I wasn't even like, 
like I, I would have known it existed if I sat and thought about that, but I just never like really thought about the fact that somebody out there is job is specifically in that like portion of the law. Like, and I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And so he says, you know, he's here to represent all of California's creatures, great and small. And that's essentially why I'm voting for Dan Kapelovitz. I'm here for it. I'm really here for it. And I hope that somebody else will also help try to rally around this. And it would be really cool if we could get Dan into the governorship. But if we can't, um, I'd rather... Here we are again, stuck eating a shit sandwich from the Democrats. But yeah, I'd rather have Gavin than at least Gavin doesn't have a, a like, he's not out here whipping up the fucking National Guard to come criminalize families who have been here generations, people who are like, we're having an eviction crisis and this man wants to fucking round us up and take people out. It's just sad. And the criminalization of people who sleep in their cars, who sleep at the park, who sleep at all during the day in a public space, who have to, you know, shower in places they don't want to. Like, you think they want to shower there? You think they want to be at the, the public spaces begging to use the toilet so they can take a crap? Like, no, nobody wants that. It's just what the homeless are forced to do because of how our society is set up. There's a permanent impoverished class, and there should it shouldn't be illegal to be a part of that class. And I was just really disgusted when I saw, like, I would expect that stuff from elder you know what i'm saying i expect that shit from a republican but when we have like people who are like my age who are just snootily like acting like they're self-made millionaires who are acting like oh these poor people let's just get them out of here that's just not how this works and i i feel like rich people really don't comprehend how much the poor and the working class keep everything they love alive like in San Carlos, I think I've said this before, like I've met people at their Safeway who take the bus like two hours to work at their Safeway. And these assholes just walking around, driving down from the hills, they don't even realize that like they're this close to not having somebody who's doing it. And they want to be mad. Hey, why is there only one cash register open? If poor people cannot afford to live in your city... How the fuck is any of this supposed to work? It's the same in Santa Cruz. Like, Santa Cruz has this huge issue. I love Santa Cruz. But you can't afford to live there and work any of the jobs in any of their little shops. You can't. It's impossible. You try and work at one of those cute little bakeries. You try to work at one of the little sweet spots downtown. You can't afford to live there unless you're literally living in a fucked up situation where you're house sharing with a bunch of strangers which is impossible if you have even as much as like one kid it's just not safe and they don't let you in <laughs> they don't let you in even if you could get in so it's like a really sad crazy scary situation where uh i'm just not looking forward to this recall i think it was a waste of money I'm like, I just think of what we could have done with that money otherwise. Provide, like, split that money up, do another Golden State stimulus, split that money up, and, um, like, worked towards building affordable housing, getting people into affordable housing, subsidizing maybe, I don't know, doing something so that some of these homes could become affordable housing. It's just, like... It's just wild to me that those things are not an option, but somehow rallying up the National Guard to bus us out is. And it's just upsetting. But at any rate, that's what I'm going to say about the recall. That's how I'm voting. I hope that this encouraged some people, inspired some people. If you're a green voter, I hope you stay strong this election and when the actual election comes up next year let's keep voting may your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads and i'll see you next time